by State Farm Insurance and the State Farm agents throughout Oregon. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Gatorade. Gatorade, it's all you're thirsting for. And by Pepsi Cola Bottlers of Oregon. Pepsi, a taste that has more Oregonians saying, gotta have it. The Rich Brooks Show on the Oregon Sports Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim along with a coach, and welcome to the show this week as we take a look at that victory over Texas Tech. We'll also introduce you to one of the football players that had a big role in yesterday's victory and take a preview look at what's in store next week when the Ducks host UNLV. Congratulations. Uh, finally got that uh, victory that you've been waiting for for quite some time. Uh, came down to the final couple of plays of the game, but you got it done. Well, it certainly did. We had uh, a lot of opportunities that we failed to capitalize on, Todd, but uh, maybe in, in one sense it was the best way we could have won a game with everything that was hanging over us from the hangover from last season, the six straight losses to finish the year, and the two that we started with this year. Uh, I think that being put in a position where you had to make a play at the end of the game to win it uh, has to do a lot for our confidence. Uh, there were some chances that we let get away, but uh, now we can build on a positive note rather than a negative note on trying to correct those mistakes. Defensively, I, I think your coaches and the players have to be uh, commended for uh, increasing the intensity. Uh, the game plan was good. You virtually uh, shut out Bam Morris uh, running the football. You made Hall throw it all day. And other than the one uh, apparent breakdown in the secondary, your defense did an outstanding job. Well, I, I tell you, Todd, uh, we expected to have an outstanding defensive team and we didn't play that way obviously uh, in the first game and uh, not very well in the second but the intensity level was better our tackling was much much improved and and we started playing run defense again and, and I think the coaches did an outstanding job of uh, devising a game plan where we kept Hall contained and at the same time had a, a spy guy sometimes that if he pulled it down and ran that we were there to make the tackle and and that was critical uh, we did get, I think, an excellent pass rush. Uh, Cummins, particularly, and uh, Terrell Edwards and Ernest Jones mm -hmm. put a lot of pressure on Hall. And uh, uh, there were some opportunities that uh, we had that we didn't capitalize on, that the defense gave us great field position. But uh, I think overall, this is, this is a real team victory because uh, the defense did what they had to do. The offense ran the ball better, did what they had to do. and. Uh, Although we had some near misses in the kicking game, the kicking game also gave us some, uh, some points and some field position. All right, the Ducks, for one of the few times in a long time, actually lost the toss of the coin. And so uh, you get the football to start the football game. You said uh, before the game started, that's what you wanted anyway. Well, we were going to take it whether we won or lost the coin toss because we figured they would de defer. But I was going to take it if we won just to try to shake something up. <laughs> well, you shook things up right off the bat thanks to Sean Burwell and some good blocking up front. Nice job. Mark Sliman gets a good block in the wedge, and Burwell breaks it clean. Uh, boy, look at that guy close on him. They did have some speed on their football team. Anthony Wiley. You can see from the end zone that they get a bad kick. It's a squib kick kicking into the wind. I don't know if this was intentional or not, but you can see a good job by the wedge up front. Troy Bailey and Mark Sliman, two defensive linemen, uh, getting nice blocks in the wedge there. And Burwell had a big gaping hole to run up into. The front five did a nice job of blocking as well. So a good emotional start to this game. Uh, you've got great field position at the Texas Tech 32. Do a, a nice job running up the middle, gaining about five yards on first down and come back with Ricky Whittle. Uh, get a nice block by David Collinsworth out in front of him there. They pile on late there, get a half the distance to the goal line uh, personal foul penalty that sets us up in excellent field position, and unfortunately, we are unable to take it, take it and put it in the end zone. Burwell again trips over a, a blocker at the line of scrimmage and gains three. Now on a sweep play, uh, we bust a blocking assignment at the line of scrimmage and allow the linebacker to run through and tackle us for a loss. Third, uh, or second down and goal, actually. I thought he was gonna get in here. It looked like he might be able to sneak it in, but uh, he's tackled at the three yard line so it's a third and goal and this is why number six is an all-american a nice play there uh, making the tackle for no gain and now we're forced into a field goal a difficult angle right side tim de groot snapping uh, redshirt freshman for the very first action he's ever had at the college level and uh, 
Excellent snap, good kick, and Tommy gets off the snide. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, his previous two attempts had both been long field goal attempts, one over 50 and the other about 47. Tommy got this kickoff. Uh, nice job there uh, covering down uh, by Paul. Uh, Paul Jensen, out Paul of Jensen and also Mike Allison. But that, that kickoff had to be up there about 4.4, which is an unbelievable hang time. Great job by the defense, swarming, gang tackling. You can see they're going to try to get the ball to Bam Morris here on a sweep play. But uh, we get right up field there, do a nice job. And uh, look at the, uh, the green jerseys in on the tackle there. Takes a lot of muscle to lift that guy off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 11. And here, Ernest Jones really gets credit for a sack. They get called for intentional grounding. Uh, takes it five yards further back. And we're in great shape here, and now we let him off the hook. We miss a tackle right there. And Bam Morris showing uh, his running ability that had well over 200 yards of rushing coming into this game. Picked up uh, 15, and then we jumped off sides to give him a first down. But look at, uh, look at the play there. Jeff Cummings runs head on into uh, to Morris. See it on the replay. Throwing a little uh, screen slip pass out here. Jeff Cummings, the spy guy, number 99 at the bottom of your screen. You can see Ernest Jones chasing the back. This is the fullback, I'm sorry, it's not Bam Morris. But look at, the, again, the green jerseys and the pursuit and the aggressiveness of our tackling. So the next play we see is third down and six from the Tech 30, Oregon leading 3 nothing. A little bit too big a cushion there early in the game. Uh, stepped out of bounds. Uh, that's that uh, great receiver, Hill, who uh, we were given a little bit too big a cushion too early, but you can see why later when he runs right by us. <laughs> nice play there by Alex Molding after uh, coming back uh, on the pass that was completed in front of him. He comes up and tackles Bam Morris by the shoelaces and gets him down. They like to get those big guys running east-west instead That's of right. north-south. So uh, they do pick up the first down, and then on a first and 20 play, Paul hits his tight end, Scott Ayler. Gain of 24, and uh, here's one of the great catches that uh, you're going to see this year or any year. Wow. That's one of the reasons we were giving him a cushion. <laughs> as I mentioned. The guy is a great receiver. He truly is, and what a, what a nice pass. But a good play there by Gary Williams, who uh, got his first start of the season, starting to recover from the uh, uh, knee surgery that he had last fall. And we got a little lucky there. Uh, Eric Castle in coverage, but unfortunately uh, wasn't quite where he should have been and, and they uh, dropped the ball and they got lucky there because if that had been thrown where it could have been caught Alex would have intercepted it. So they come in and attempt the field goal Davis so boots it through. And so uh, it's three to three as we wind down here in the first quarter. It was actually a very good stand there after they had a first and goal on the three yard line and Ricky Whittle busting up the middle or I'm sorry that's uh, Sean Burwell busting up the middle. And now he busts up the middle again, but the with, ball is back at the line of scrimmage. Without the ball. And this is something we've been on Sean about uh, uh, actually since the Freedom Bowl. He carries the ball a little loosely, and it just got slapped out of his hand. And nice play there by Alex Molden again. Uh, he's played some remarkable football for a redshirt freshman. Now we get him running, as you mentioned, east and west rather than north and south. And Eric Castle makes the tackle along with some help for a loss. You can see Ernest Jones forces the play to bounce outside. Farwell and Castle in pursuit. Castle with the good speed comes in and gets a hold of him and gets some help from Farwell and Molden. So this will be the final play of the first quarter. Paul back to pass and Jeff Cummins knocks him down a sack, loss of four. Big play by Jeff coming from the bottom of your screen. You can see he beats their left tackle badly and gets Hall before he has a chance for the sack. Let's get into the second quarter highlights. The game is tied at 3-3, but Texas Tech on the first play of the second quarter will attempt and convert on a field goal from 40 yards out by John Davis, and the Red Raiders take the lead 6-3. Both teams had possessions, unable to move it, and so we pick it up with about 10 minutes to go in the half. The Ducks get it back. That was a third down and six play as Danny O'Neill found Vince Ferry just good enough for the first. Play action fake, uh, pass we've seen many times. Uh, off the play fake, the draw fake, and hitting uh, the corner route to Derek Deadweiler over here. Uh, Danny finds, throws it 
Nice pass, drops it in there. Drake goes up and makes a good catch before stepping out of bounds. So we continue the drive and pick it up later on. Third and 11 from the Tech 29-yard line. Excellent pass protection. Hits Ronnie Harris over the middle. Ronnie made a nice catch, reversed his field, and took it down deeper into Tech territory. Good for 17 yards and a first down. Look at the excellent pass blocking here. Opened up a nice passing lane for Danny to step up in the pocket and throw the football over the middle. So the ball now at the Tech 12 yard line, first and 10. A little trap play to Burwell back to the weak side. Picks up about eight on first down. Second down and three. You see Burwell cuts and has a crease into the end zone for the score and the Ducks have the lead and that is our play of the day. Actually, Todd, that was a similar play to the one that we just talked about with uh, Burwell faking over the ball and we hit uh, Derek Deadweiler. It's the same action. We try to make it look like a draw play, only this time we handed it off to Burwell on the draw play. Danny comes back, shows the ball to the defense as he comes back, sticks it out. Burwell takes it. We get a good block by Defonso at the strong guard and Stark at the strong tackle, and Shedrick goes up on the linebacker. Burwell finds the crease and takes it in for the touchdown. Let's take a look at it from the low angle. See Tom Curran gets help from Defonso there, and uh, Burwell does a good job lowering his shoulders there and sticking it into the end zone. Well, you mentioned the blocking of uh, Juan Shedrick. He really was instrumental in your team uh, doing such a good job running the football. The PAT by Tommy Thompson is good, and you've got the lead. It's 10 to 6, but <laughs> it doesn't last very long. Not very long. First play on the next possession for Tech. They go to four wide receivers. Hall, down the stripe, Hill, touchdown, 65 yards. We uh, got caught short in a zone coverage, didn't have the middle of the field covered, and uh, they get a very cheap, easy touchdown. Boy, that, uh, nothing that burns you more than uh, something like that because the crowd had uh, <laughs> swelled, it uh, started to get excited, and then boom, the air comes out of the balloon. And a nice job scrambling here by Danny O'Neill, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. We hope to get something going here before the half. This was a, a key series, or it appeared it was going to be extremely key in the football game. Burwell gets about four, then he spins and gets four more. So it's third down, a little over one. And we're running an option here, and Danny takes it up much too soon. He should have come out, optioned it, and I think we had a good play. So now I like to go for it on fourth down, and we uh, don't get the linebacker blocked, and he hits Whittling. I'm not sure we got a great spot on this, but we didn't make the first down. Uh, but fortunately, Alex Molden made the coach look a little better by making this play right here. A great interception by Alex. His third takeaway in three games, and a nice return of 19 yards. You can see he's off playing a zone. Uh, this is probably an ill-advised pass by Hall. He, he didn't throw many like that. And you can see Alex goes up at the highest point, which is what you like to teach your defensive backs. And he takes it directly up the sideline, gets a block from Eric Castle right there, and gets spun out of bounds after a 19-yard return. So now you get it back. Kind of a similar situation to a week ago at Stanford, only maybe not as much time on the clock. But this week, no, other than that play, a good job of the time management. That's the play where Vince Ferry got the bruised ribs. Uh, he played a little bit after that, but was ineffective, and Willie Tate pretty much took the, the rest of the day at tight end. Nice, uh, nice run there uh, by Burwell. That got you the first down. Now it's uh, out at the 48-yard line. Look at the pass protection there uh, to give him time to throw. Again, to Ronnie Harris coming on the same route, coming across the middle. But look at the, the pocket. I mean, there's nobody around him. Great job by Justin Stark on the right of your screen getting a, a nice block on their rusher, and a, a good job by Ronnie Harris. Gain of 22, first down, 30 seconds to play in the half. The Ducks are trailing it 13 to 10. And we had a screen pass called here. Uh, Danny threw it away, and we actually got an illegal down, lineman downfield penalty. Now, if he yards. had thrown it out of bounds behind the, the line, line it would have been OK. And here, uh, Willie Tate. All alone, uh, they bust the coverage and let their tight end, our tight end, come across. And Danny finds him wide open. And uh, Willie Tate is going to go to the Sean Burwell School of learning how to carry the football. Uh, he's in the wrong arm, and it's uh, 
he steps out of bounds even before he makes contact. We, uh, we're going to work on him a little bit. Uh, he might have a little uh, well, what we call gauntlet drill. Well, that's only his third career reception, so. Uh... And a nice job uh, by Burwell there. Uh, we try to run a little play up the middle and dive play, and uh, he makes a nice cut at the line of scrimmage, gets some good blocking. Just couldn't quite bust it in, tried to keep his legs going, but that hit right there by number 25, 26, excuse me, stopped him short. And now Danny will triple. Mike Defonzo steps back with his foot, and Danny trips over his foot and falls down. Now we call timeout with four seconds left, and this is the shortest uh, time I've ever seen a field goal take, where there was actually one tick left on the clock after this. All right, we get into the third quarter. Of course, you remember the Ducks received the opening kickoff, and so this time around, uh, they will be booting it away to Texas Tech to start the third quarter of play with the game tied at 13-13. Let's get into the action as we uh, pick things up right on the uh, opening kickoff of the uh, third quarter. Your special team's uh, kick coverage has been very, very good so far this season. Well, it has, and it's set the tone, obviously, to start this second half. Uh, another great high kick and deep, uh, down to one yard deep, and Dan Walsh uh, and Brady O'Connor make the hit uh, on the 13-yard line. And what a way to set the tempo for the defense to come out and dominate the second half. You can see again on, on the replay here, Tommy gets a real nice high kick. Now, this is... This is great hang time. I, I can't emphasize that. Now, that's one of the reasons the coverage is so good, because the ball is in the air well over four seconds. In a normal kickoff, normal people kick at about 3-8. Uh, some of his kicks have been hanging up as long as 4-4. Dan Walsh, uh, tough walk on from Montana, redshirt freshman, and, and Grady O'Connor, another track uh, member, a 400-meter uh, runner uh, and uh, hurdler. Good job here by the defense playing the screen pass. Jeff Cummins out there, he's getting held. Guy tries to tackle him right off of <laughs> off the back. Gets called, we refused that penalty because uh, we had tackling for a loss. So third and 14, almost oh, a safety. Almost a safety. Almost an interception. Almost a, another Joe Farwell deflected it, but uh, Terrell Edwards had him in his grasp and just slipped out, uh, he might have had a safety. And here is a great wall set up on the punt return only to be foiled by our own man. We ran into our own blocker. Uh, looked like a possible long punt return for a touchdown, but we did get the corner. Excellent job by our return team this week of holding uh, Texas Tech on the line and then peeling to set the picket. And you can see Ronnie gets the catch, and he's got uh, excellent speed. Shakes the first one, gets a good block there, gets another good block there, and here we are. Tony Coker wants to get the ball from him and help him run, I guess, and unfortunately slowed him up, and uh, we were held short of a, a real nice here. And we only get about three or four yards on that possession after great field position, and Tommy Thompson kicks a 47-yard field goal that cleared the uprights. Amazing. I mean, you've seen him in practice uh, on an almost daily basis from 55, 60 yards. All right, believe it or not, those are going to be the final points of this game, and it was hard to imagine at that point in time, wasn't it? It, it certainly was. And look at this uh, defense play now. Uh, Farwell steps up, Terrell Edwards comes in from the side to make the tackle, and Cummins comes in for another sack. Uh, the poor old left tackle from Texas Tech had a tough day. Uh, if it wasn't uh, Cummins, it was uh, Ernest Jones coming from that side, and, and Jeff hangs on here, does a nice job getting the sack, big play. Got the fans into the game early, and here we turn it right back with the uh, inexperience here. Uh, we should have got, Ronnie Harris should have been screaming for uh, our return people to get out of the way. They're coming down trying to block. Ronnie came up uh, and ran into our own man, and the ball bounced and hit us, and uh, we get credited with the fumble. That's the same thing that should have happened on our blocked field goal side, but uh, the officials didn't see them. Nice job here by Farwell again, gets help from Rodriguez and Castle. This is a big defensive stand, Coach, because uh, you know, Texas Tech uh, with a score could take the lead, and instead your defense just sticks them right here. And that's what we call sudden change because of the, the turnover by our special teams. It was a critical stand for us at this juncture and gave up valuable field position. Well, on fourth and 11, the Ducks were called for running into the punter uh, on a punt that ended up being at the 17 instead. Tech punts again, and 
Boy, you can't uh, do any better than that. They got a great bounce. I mean, the ball landed about a yard and a half inside and then kicked dead left out on the one yard line. And Juan Shedrick makes a nice run here. Gets us out of the shadow of our own goal line. Gives us some operating room. In fact, we're going to show the next couple of plays from behind that goal line. And uh, nice blocking at the line of scrimmage. Ricky Whittle hits it up in there fast and aggressively. Picks up the first down. We come right back with the same play and uh, do a nice job picking up another five or six yards. Then on a second down and eight after a five-yard uh, penalty. A little quick screen out in the flat, and Derek picks up the first down after getting a good block from Anthony Jones. Now the ball out at the 29. Almost gone here. I thought he might bounce off of that, but uh, they held on for the tackle. Uh, nice blocking at the point of attack by Shedrick, Defonzo, Collinsworth. Uh, and Ricky breaks in. He, you can see him protecting that football. He's got both hands around it. He doesn't want to fumble. He says, I finally got in the game and I'm not going to come out. Yeah. First down after a gain of 24. And uh, Derek has a chance to make a big catch there. Goes off his fingertips and we stall. Have to punt the ball away. So here they come trying to get to the outside. Morris uh, does not get much. The option play, they hadn't run it very much. We were concerned about it. Nice job by Ernest Jones forcing the quick pitch. And Farwell hanging on to 230 pounds and bulldogging him <laughs> to the ground, just like the rodeo we've had in town. That's right, without the lasso to boot. So good job by Joe Farwell. That's the final play we will see in the third quarter. The Ducks leading at 16-13. Well, into the fourth quarter we go. A lot of excitement yet to come, and uh, let's get right to it. As we pick up action, the Ducks with the lead by three. Texas Tech with the ball. Paul back, he's down. He uh, saw us coming off the corner with a safety blitz. Chad Cota coming in, he tried to set up and he slipped and fell, giving us a, uh, whatever you want to call it, a team sack or what. And Ronnie Harris, just got to keep running there. Just use his speed. He's not one of the niftiest cutback runners and he's got to learn that and just use his speed and try to get what he can. Excellent wall again on the pass protection. Nice job here by Derek catching the ball over the middle and getting hit and hanging on to it. And you can see again, this is the play fake that uh, we scored the touchdown on, only this is the play action fake off of the draw, and we hit uh, Derek coming across the middle with no underneath coverage because they're reacting up to the draw fake. There are a couple series uh, here where you just get the feeling if you can get a touchdown, I mean, you're going to put this thing away, but one thing or another happens and it, you don't get into the end zone. Yes, uh, and we do it to ourselves. Fourth down, and we get a motion penalty here. This is a, uh, I think he did move, but it's it's really close. And you yeah. see we've got an easy first down there. And now this, watch the player on the right-hand side. Well, you can't see it on this film, but the, that guy right there, number 27, touched the ball. Obi Babs recovers it. It's our ball at that point. The officials did not see that. So instead, it's Tech's ball at the, uh, original line of scrimmage, not where it was down. And a big cushion there, big cushion, and uh, they complete the pass. Now they go back again, and uh, things are not looking good. They put two pass plays together. All of a sudden, we looked like we were going to put the game away, so to speak, and now they're at midfield. And uh, again, that's the spy technique Coach Schuler uh, had in the end of this game. Uh, we rushed three only on this situation, had one guy sit there, and you can see Ernest Jones right there spying to make sure that the quarterback did not pull the ball down and run it up the middle on us. So you get it back. Ten minutes to play, up by three. Screen pass to Ricky Whittle and, oh, almost a big play there. Almost a big play. Instead, it's a gain of ten. It's a third and four. Big play here. Deadweiler almost got through the crease. Almost bounced off of that and had a big play. But this is a slant pass similar to the one that Doug Musgrave threw to him in the fourth quarter at Stanford, and made, he made a nice catch, and if he could have just kept his balance from that hit, he'd have been long gone. So, first and 10 inside Tech territory at the 46, leading by three. And just, you know, we're moving the ball, and it's just, it's frustrating to think that we can't uh, result in more points in, in this situation. Great uh, block at the point of attack there, nice big hole, and Ricky Whittle sheds one tackle, Good stiff arm there before he's driven out of bounds. Third down and 11 is the next play that we see from the 34. O'Neill rolls out 
And the ball is intercepted by Tracy Saul. And Tech has the football back after a 14-yard return. And Derek Detweiler comes in uh, from the side to make the tackle. And here we go back into uh, tight, uh, tightness time. Breathing hard, getting nervous. <laughs> nice job by Chad Cota on Hill, knocking it loose and out of bounds. Third down and three. A lot of pressure. Had to scramble up, and this time Cummins was the, sc the spy man. We had pressure from the upside. You can see Jeff start to rush and then check up, and he's waiting to see if he's going to scramble. We had a safety blitz on, and there's Jeff Cummins right there, along with Ernest Jones to make the tackle. Loss of one, so it goes as a sack. Now, you got it back, couldn't move it, and here was what could have been absolute disaster. I'll tell you what, that's why I'm getting uh, my hair falling out and it's turning gray on me, because we, we have an absolute piece of cake blocking assignment and we just bust it and turn a man loose. But here comes Ernest Jones, the cavalry to the rescue. Came around that corner like he came off of a... Uh, Give a shot out of a he, cannon. He did, and look at that, that poor left tackle had a tough day. Uh, Nice job by Ernest Jones and pressure from the other side from Terrell Edwards. Second down and 17. This time they try to block him with the back. The back has far more, <laughs> far littler success than the tackle did. And you can see from the bottom, C41, the big fullback, he tries to tackle him, but Ernest just shakes him and gets another sack. He's making it look easy here. You see third and 24 with uh, a minute 21 to play. And Tech not only completes the pass, yes. but gets the first and gets out of bounds. This is terrible. <laughs> what a nightmare. I mean, we had them two sacks in a row, thought we were in pretty good shape, and then we let them off the hook. Second and 10 incomplete. That will show the rest of the plays in this. Eugene Jackson uh, making the play there. Third and 10. And on this play, uh, Farwell was had coverage and he actually ran into our spy man Ernest Jones as he backed out and and uh, fell down which released the fullback. That's the same route they end up trying to throw on fourth down. This is second down. Great pressure there by Ernest Jones and Terrell Edwards forces Hall to throw it away. Now they're, remember they're at the Oregon 25. And now they use their final timeout to decide whether or not to go for it on fourth or try a field goal. Spike Dykes elects to go for a first down or the touchdown, and this is fourth and ten. And here's Paul Rodriguez in coverage, gets his hand in to deflect it. The safeties were coming over the top. Castle hit uh, the receiver, but uh, Rodriguez saved the day by getting his hand in on that ball. Shaking your head, uh, the two coaches uh, meet at center field. And a huge sigh of relief from uh, 22,000 fans and uh, a lot of football players and coaches as well as you come out on top 16 to 13. Good luck next week, Coach. I hope you bring back another victory. A reminder, if you'd like to join us in the studio for a live taping of the Coaches Show, join us down here on Sundays at about noon. We'd love to have you here. Thanks for those that attended today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.